Your money and business starts now. David, thank you for being with us. In the, in the marketing communications world, what do you mean by surround sound? So it's a new term, and what it means is you really have to be everywhere that the potential customer is. How does the customer hear you at all times? Makes integrated marketing communications that much more important. Where are the touch points? Are you reaching the potential customer online appropriately? Are you reaching them in store? Are you hitting them with the emotional experience you want through the product and through the customer service? That all needs to be engineered to create a surround sound experience that the brand is experienced by the target audience the same way throughout. Sounds expensive. Is this confined to larger companies? Some can be, but one of the most important elements today is you have to be where the potential customer is when he or she wants you and where they're looking for you. And predominantly, where most customers are looking today is online first, just first to perhaps get the information and then to make the buying decision. And that's why digital marketing communications has grown by leaps and bounds over the last couple of years and especially over the last couple of months. And some very important new things are happening with SEO, with pay-per-click, and especially around retargeting that's really making that sector so important for helping to create surround sound. All right, let's unpack some of the terms. Sure. SEO, search engine optimization, what does that Correct. mean? Correct. So that's the organic side of search. If I put in a term into my search engine, let's call it Google, the organic listing, what Google determines is the best match for what you've searched is done through search engine optimization. And we a, should say that you can, you can buy your way onto the top of that list. Correct, and that's the pay-per-click side. So the search engine optimization is you need usually to hire experts, an agency like ours or other people in the industry who really know how to create websites and to maximize the hits for keywords. And then there's the pay-per-click side where textually you can buy any time you want to match with a search from a potential customer, your ad will run. And that's done by a bidding system that can, year after year, month after month, increase in cost considerably. And you could buy also, if you're a Coke, you can buy Pepsi is the term that, that you Correct. want. Correct. So most of our clients, most clients out there who are doing pay-per-click today are buying what we call against their competitors. Now where this gets really exciting and sort of the new thing that a lot of our clients are super excited about is what's called retargeting. And what that means is if somebody comes to visit your site, you know you already have a potential vetted interested customer, or we can even do it if we make a top 20 or a top 30 list of your potential competitors if they went to visit their site, an ad, a visual ad will now follow them around the Google network, which could be CNN or Fox, costs nothing for that ad to run, only if your potential client clicks through do you pay a fee for that. All right, let's, we'll talk about the, the creepiness factor of that. <laughs> but but how, does, how does brand A know that Jeff visited Van, brand B's website? So through Google, we're able to track that. We're able to know that Jeff indeed visited brand B's website and then can serve up one of the ads that we've asked it to serve to Jeff. Okay, so the creepiness side is if, um, if I'm on my phone right. and I look up a hotel someplace, I go back to the office, I'm gonna see an ad for that hotel. Correct, because it's I, tied that, to your email address and to your user ID. It creeps me out a little bit. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things is most people don't understand how that's happening because there's so many ways that marketers can now very specifically target audiences, whether that's by geolocation, whether that's by IP address, whether it's by the kinds of searches they've done historically. There are many ways. Most consumers have no idea why they're being served an ad, but for some it can be sort of startling. How did they know I was looking for that? Or why is a competitor for someone I was interested in all of a sudden serving me up an ad. However, the cost effectiveness of this is incredible and the ROI on it is well better than almost any other digital approach. And since it's so young, the cost, it's again a competitive bid process, 
is much less usually than regular textual ads that are just pay-per-click. What was the old, there was a great quote from somebody in the advertising business pre-internet era who right. said, I know half of the advertising marketing budget is wasted, right. I just don't know which half. Exactly. And now you know, I mean, you, you, you get results. Correct, now you can really drill down to an incredible level to see how many people visited a site through which ad, how many of them converted, and through Google you can even do, it used to be we did A and B testing of different types of ads. Now often with clients we're doing A, B, C, and D testing. Let's explain that because that's fascinating. So a, a newspaper, for example, would have on their homepage a headline for a story. They'll show that to half of the people. The other half might get the B headline and Correct. they see which gets more clicks. Correct. And they switch over to that. Correct. So now through Google on the back end, we can actually provide more than two. We could do three or four, whether it's a visual ad or a textual ad. And we let the marketplace tell us which of those four performs the best. Google will tell you the percentage. And then based on who's performing the best, we can choose which ads to run. Now, sometimes it may be based on the segmentation of your target audience or the time of day. But usually, it's a pretty good overall diagnosis of what's working and what's not working. Your, your job is to market for your clients, your, your customers. Do, do you ever worry about the privacy side of it? Is it possible we get a backlash at, at some point about people being targeted by their uh, geographic location, where they work, what their IP address is, all of that stuff? So, so far we haven't seen a ton of that backlash. Certainly I think if it crosses, there's a thin line there. And if it crosses that thin line, I think you could see some people upset. But one of the things that we are seeing on the positive side is people want the information when they want it, and they want to have access to that information as easily and quickly as possible. So if you're providing them with the right information at the right time, it's generally welcome. Where it's generally not welcome is when you're hitting them over the head, and this goes more to old school advertising and marketing approaches, where you're hitting them over the head with a message that they don't need or don't want right now and to a target audience that isn't interested in it. Some of the newer tactics, one of the ones we've just been talking about now, allows you to really focus on serving up the information to people who are already looking for it. You're only getting it because you put in some t keywords into Google looking for that information. Your company's 20 years old now. Could you have imagined 20 years ago that this is what you'd be doing today? No, this is very different. The fundamentals or the underlying conceptions of what makes for great marketing communications have not changed. And that's you've got to find ways to make a great emotional connection with your target audience. And that requires, number one, you have to be very clear about what makes you different. What is your brand? What does it stand for? How do you make that emotional connection with your target audience? And number three is you've got to be very clear about who your target audience is. Great brands are not going to be for everyone. And when they try to be for everyone, they generally lose out. They generally do not do well. David Warshavsky, thank you for being with us. My pleasure.